So um, the work I'll be talking about is the fruit of a collaboration between myself and Harsh Patel from the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics at Stanford University. Um, I'll go through some of the fundamentals of the couple of joint theory that this is based on, uh, and then give a more detailed overview of um, the implementation of the new formulation of for aerostructural discrete adjoint uh, coupled sensitivities in SU2. And finally, I'll show some of the validation and verification results that uh, Harsh and I obtained. Um, before any of that, I'll quickly give an overview of in what context this work uh, takes place. So we are trying to formulate the airframe design task as a mathematical optimization problem where we're trying to find the design X in terms of structural sizing variables as well as geometric shape variables, um, which will maximize the overall aircraft performance F in flight, uh, usually subject to many, many constraints emerging from, uh, let's say, structural considerations. Um, and for certain types of aircraft, the interaction between the aerodynamic solution and the structural response is quite strong. So we need to take that into account in the analysis model. Um, in particular, the work that Harsh and I did is taking place is emerging from recent efforts to integrate higher fidelity aerodynamics in existing industrial workflows for these um, for multidisciplinary design analysis and optimization, where a particular characteristic is that um, we do not want to compromise on the formulation of the structural sizing problem, and we are generally uh, using SU2 as one tool within a larger set of tools in a common environment. Um, even though we were using different frameworks, uh, different structural solvers, and even different coupling strategies, Harsh and I identified um, common, let's say, missing requirements for the integration of SU2 in such workflows. Um, namely, we both needed a more granular control of the shape update sequence uh, with an SU2. Uh, and most importantly, we needed to be able to evaluate, access, and modify uh, more, let's say, grid, grid quantities, solution quantities, as well as sensitivity. Um, so I'll be very brief about the theory for the last talk. So. Um, returning to the optimization problem, uh, let's assume we have um, our quantity of interest, which could be a constraint, but more commonly is some aerodynamic quantity related to aircraft performance, which depends on both the aerodynamic and structural state, as well as on the design itself. Um, we can use the chain rule, as well as, let's say, some uh, observation that the combined aerostructural state Q and U must satisfy the residuals of the governing equations are zero for all solutions of the governing equations um, for any design X uh, in order to rewrite, let's say, the calculation of the total derivative of our quantity of interest i in terms of the design x in terms of so-called adjoint variables. Um, and now in this last system of equations, assuming we are able to obtain all of these partial derivatives um, within or and without, let's say, uh, SU2, um, we are able to solve for the coupled um, error structural adjoint uh, um, variables. And we're able to use those to obtain our total sensitivity. Uh, so, how is this implemented in SU2? Um, previously, uh, well, um, it, as you might know, um, in order to run the shape optimization with SU2, we will be running essentially four components in sequence. Uh, the first one being the mesh solver, with which you will update your, your computational grid in order to reflect changes in the shape. May they come from changes in the design or due to structural displacements. Um, following this change, uh, you will call flow solver to update the solution of the flow equations around the new geometry. Once you have converged that, you can use the converged state uh, to run the adjoint flow analysis from which you will obtain the adjoint variables as well as sensitivities with respect to the deformed coordinates. And finally, you can apply as well the adjoint mesh solver in order to obtain sensitivities with respect to the underformed coordinates or directly with respect to your design variables. Um, unfortunately, only two of these four components were previously, uh, let's say, 
directly controllable uh, through a Python interface. Uh, and so the first part of the work that Harsh and I did was to implement two new so-called driver classes for the mesh deformation that were at the end of the part. Um, and let's say in order to avoid code duplication, we ended up also uh, adding an extra, let's say, a parent class uh, to factor out the common codes. The next step was the evaluation of the partial derivatives, which appear in the equations I showed previously. Um, SU2 uses a so-called fixed point formulation of the discrete adjoint, um, which has advantages in terms of the convergence behavior. Unfortunately, uh, we were not able to get the partial derivatives that we were looking for directly using this formulation. And so we opted to implement an alternative, let's say residual based formulation, which is closer to the equations that I, I showed in, in, in theory. Um, Luckily, in order to do this, uh, we had two tools at our disposal, namely the framework for algorithmic differentiation using CodyPack and MediPact in SU2. Um, now, I won't go into detail about how this exactly works. I would recommend that you look at the presentation of Toby that was given last year. Um, but in short, uh, we are recording a set of operations that give us the output of interest from the input that we are, let's say, getting our derivative with respect to, um, and we had to split this recording uh, up into several uh, parts in order to get the partial derivatives that we were interested in. Um, so we did this in a new class, uh, a new variant of the discrete joint solver, the residual base or residual discrete joint solver, um, and essentially we reduced the recording uh, we, to only include some preprocessing, deformation of the mesh, calculation of flow residuals, the integration of the loads, um, and finally also the evaluation of the objective property. Um, so this allows us to obtain the partial derivatives that we're looking for. And once we are able to assemble the adjoint system of equations, uh, we are able to solve it um, by using the built-in linear solvents with some preconditioning tricks. Um, so here is the table summarizing uh, the uh, the partial derivatives that we implemented. Just as a side note, um, we aren't storing all of the partial derivatives explicitly because some of them are the large matrices and we store only the matrix vector products of these partial derivatives uh, with the adjoint variables when appropriate. Um, we validated these all to be exact to achieve precision when compared to finite differences. Um, and finally, in order to use this in an external framework, we needed to be able to access and modify the outputs and inputs of interest. So we did a bit of an overhaul of the Python interface, uh, such as the getters and setters, uh, where we tried to uh, sort of standardize the naming of some of the methods and heavily extend which quantities were available in terms of, let's say, definition of the grid or the physical boundary conditions, um, the solution of the primal equations and the adjoint. Um, so I'll skip over this, this is an example of what, what, let's say, using the Python interface would look like. Um, returning to the new formulation of the coupled discrete and joint problem, uh, we ran some validation tests, uh, starting with this very silly case where we had just a five by five grid, uh, which we were initially uh, running to make sure that our uh, partial derivatives and also our total, total derivatives were correct. What we did in order to compare the sensitivities throughout the flow domain, uh, rather than looking at individual values, um, we compared the new formulation to the old fixed point formulation um, with what is called the modal assurance uh, criterion, uh, as well as the, the corresponding modal scaling factor. Basically, this is a value that will tell you how collinear your vector is with respect to another vector. Um, and because usually the results were quite good, we ended up uh, looking rather at the order of magnitude of the error between. Um, the model assurance criterion and the value uh, one, which indicates a perfect uh, match. Um, so for this very simple key decision, but as we go to more complicated uh, cases, so in this case, we had a 2D airfoil in subsonic flow. Um, then we did also a case in 3D uh, in transonic flow, all using Euler equations for now, all the way up to, um, let's say, full aircraft configuration and supersonic conditions. Uh, and we found that the, um, while the error does deteriorate um, for various reasons, uh, the, the 
yeah, joint solutions and especially the, the sensitivities uh, match up quite well. So this is the worst case here. There are some visible qualitative differences, but this is most likely due to the fact that um, in the residual based formulation, quality of our sensitivities is very dependent on how well we converge the primal problem. And in this case, we did not converge so well. And so in fact, as it becomes tougher to converge the primal problem, we also have more, um, let's say, deterioration of the actual solution. Um, so in summary, um, in order to integrate uh, SU2 uh, more easily into external frameworks, in order to couple it with external structural um, solvers to Python, um, we have to implement some new driver classes in order to control the execution flow in Python. We generally extend the Python interface to be able to access and modify more data. Um, we have implemented uh, um, a new formulation of the discrete at joint uh, solver, which is able to provide partial derivatives, um, let's, uh, let's say exactly using algorithmic documentation. Um, and I would have to add to, to this uh, that uh, the approach that we took, uh, thanks to the, the way that the SU2 code is built up and the, the tools that are at our disposal, is, uh, is not limited to the case of error structural couple of joints that we investigated. And the same approach could be, uh, could be used also in other, other contexts. Thank you very much for, for listening. It's not only the, um, the residual case, uh, the dependency with respect to the convergence that's of the time, also the condition number and the yeah. um, sensitivity residual matrix, uh, and then we cannot change. If we yeah. have a machine actually the converge, yeah, the just uh, anecdotally, the first time we had our partial derivatives, we just tried and solved this linear yeah. system without any of the, the preconditioning tricks that uh, it was super helpful in, in help us out with this. And yeah, we were going nowhere, <laughs> let's say, just naively uh, tackling this linear system. So it's quite. Uh, Thank you. Why you're doing this? Why? In principle, a good mm -hmm. motivation for the Okay. Are there questions on that here? Sure. Thank you. Just to repeat one second. Is this for a fun? Okay, so. I just repeat for the visual audience. The question is if you were for fun. Don't get me in trouble. Uh, no, uh, yes, I uh, mean, yes, my, 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 I'm a doctoral candidate. Uh, external to the Technical University of Munich and funded by Airbus. So since I am funded by Airbus and, and had to do this as part of my PhD, um, you could say yes. <laughs> um, so the goal of my thesis um, is to um, extend or to expand on previous work that was done towards we call it simultaneous shape and sizing optimization. So we have, we consider the airframe as a whole. Uh, we set objective functions in terms of aircraft performance directly, and we try to change simultaneously the shape, mainly of the lifting surface, um, as well as the complete sizing of the airframe um, in order to maximize this aircraft performance method. Uh, this had been done previously by a colleague of mine um, using linear aerodynamics simply because if you want to do this, let's say properly, um, you, you cannot really do away with the many, many constraints that emerge from the formulation of the structural sizing. This, I mean, this is, uh, there's no, let's say, um, easy way around that. Uh, but the goal of my work is now to integrate, at least for the performance evaluation, and so for um, the evaluation of, of the eye, let's say, at cruise conditions, things like that, um, also, higher fidelity elements in the same, let's say, workflow. 